Alex, I'm Phil Dark, and you're watching Asset Finance Extreme Off-Road. Round three of the championship, a little bit different from what we've usually seen. It is a stadium race, and that means more action, more bang for your buck, but in a confined space, lots of big jumps, and watch for the Razorback. That certainly trapped a few. A little bit different, but still the same A1 action. Welcome to the Placemakers Huntley Speedway Stadium for round two of the North Island Series for the Asset Finance New Zealand Off-Roading Championship. Well, here we are with the uh, Thunder Trucks, the Class 8, and the Sport Trucks combined. You've got the best seat in the house here at Huntley because you're looking out the rear of the Clive George's Tundra, the four-wheel drive car. He sits on pole position. Right in behind him, it looks like it's Steve Lowry. And if we switch shots, you'll look out the windscreen as well. So we've got every perspective covered from the Asset Finance Tundra. Clive George on pole position. The green flag waves, and we're racing here at the Placemakers Huntley Speedway. Great start there for uh, Clive George, Ian. Yes, Clive George in this pretty amazing truck. It's four-wheel drive, V8 powered with a aluminium aftermarket monster in it. It's Kiwi built, of course. And of course, Clive is Mr. Asset Finance. Asset Finance, our major sponsor, and uh, showing the flag at the front of the field. Well, we said the sport trucks were in there as well, and there's quite a few of them. And I would expect, Ian, as this race goes on, these uh, Class 8 trucks will probably uh, get up and lap yeah, them. Yeah, most likely, especially the 4 before trucks. And I guess this is just another innovation. I know that we've been around this sort of scene for quite some time. And I remember back in the early 80s with the CTRA and uh, Brian Tracy at Waikaraka Park, a similar sort of thing. But this is much more developed. Yeah, yeah. Phil uh, Hagen from Big Post is, is the mastermind behind this event. It's a privately run event. Hats off to him for all the effort that he's put into it. We're just watching battles within battles here as we go back to the race leader, Clive George from Wakatani, Asset Finance Truck, the four-wheel driver. He's leading at the moment. Gary Baker would be through in second place and in the Class 8 trucks, the, the super trucks if you like, it'd be Mike Barrett in a four-wheel drive special. Here's a good go here, Morris Bain all over the back of Nigel Newland. So uh, we'll watch that one with interest. This is Gary Baker with two-wheel drive. You can see that it's not as manoeuvrable. Gary is a good peddler and uh, gets the best out of his truck. Clive George in the front in the uh, Tundra and Gary in a Nissan. Well, this battle continues. They're rubbing paint, they're rubbing shoulders, you name it. Morris Bain in the front now. Newland's coming back at him down the inside. I guess a, a new innovation for these guys, Ian, will be the fact that they're running on the speedway clay here. I suppose they've got to uh, work out what sort of tyre pressures, what sort of tyre combinations, suspension setup, and things like that. Yeah, that's right. And then they run to the infield. You'll notice it's not digging up a couple of inches of topsoil on a very, very hard and slippery surface. Well, this battle continues in class two. Oh, it doesn't. I spoke too soon. Morris Bain made a mistake, and that means that Nigel Newlands will go out ahead of him as we go back to the front of the field. Clive George in the front. There is Mike Barrett. Now, he's back in third place. Now, this is another one of these uh, four-wheel drive specials. It's something a little bit different. We're trying to find a home for it. Is it Toyota? Is it a Nissan? We don't know, but it gets the job done, and I guess that's all that matters. Well, this vehicle's had a squillion dollars spent on it, and Mike Barrett picked it up for... Uh a fairly nominal fee and um, is trying to capitalise on the money that has been spent on it. Ian, explain to us what's going on in the back of the truck there with all the fans, obviously a cooling device. Yeah, well, what they're trying to do is cool the air and the best example of this would be Andrew Thomason's truck which pulls the air through the front of the truck and it tunnels it through a air duct. Basically, the whole truck's an air duct and the fans suck the air through it across the motor. So these trucks have been mounted? Yes, they are. So last lap now, Clyde George comes across the line and takes the chicken flag and wins the race. Second place will be Gary Baker, and in third place it will be Mike Barrett. And in the Class 2 trucks, it'll be Morris Bain ahead of Nigel Newlands. So some Class C action for you now, and this is the Volkswagen 1600cc class. And the man to watch here, I guess, uh, Ian, is Sean Dickens. Yeah, Sean survived uh, Mary Mary, amazingly, but right here he's up against Jeff Maddich, who's a very good peddler in his Challenge Class uh, C18 there. So it's Maddich that's gone into the front. Dickens just made a little bit of a mistake as they came onto the infield section. This is the uh, Placemakers Huntley Speedway like you've never seen it before because we're using the infield. Normally in a speedway meeting, if they're on the infield, they're out. But here, it is part of the racetrack. Plenty of jumps. We mentioned before that this happened back in Auckland back in the 80s with uh, the CTRA, but I guess Mickey Thompson is the guy that's sort of credited with starting this in the United States of America. Sure, 
Sure, you're dead right. Uh, Mickey Thompson used to run off-road events in the stadiums, used to truck in heaps of dirt and truck it all out again. And, you know, this used to run before uh, crowds of 60,000 people. Um, I attended some myself, just absolutely amazing events. So Shane Paul is starting to make a move now, number 22, and that is Aaron Williams just getting involved here with Sean Dickens. Well, they say rubbing's racing in, but I don't know about that. Well, you know, in, this, in these conditions, you're going to get a bit of that, and it's not going to uh, cause any problems, really. You've heard Ian make mention of it before, lots of water going down on the track in the early afternoon. This is the twilight meeting, so we'll be running them under lights, and that'll be a, a different perspective again, so we're looking forward to that. But look at this battle here, Dickens and Williams going at it like there's no tomorrow. So Dickens it is, it gets into the front, but he's got a bit of work to do as the chicken flag comes out, and the winner is Jeff Maddich. There he is, over the main straight jump, under the chicken flag. Second place will be Shane Porter, and in third place it will be Sean Dickens, and in fourth, the man he fought with right throughout the race, and that is Aaron Williams. There's something about a day-night meeting, and when the lights come on, boy, that just changes the complexion of the whole thing. Plenty of action to come before the darkness falls on Huntley, though. Let's go back and watch round three of the Asset Finance Off-Road Championship. You're watching action from round two of the Asset Finance North Island Off-Road Championship. Coming to you from the Placemakers Huntley Speedway, and this is the Sport Trucks in Class 2 mixed up, and we've got a big field here, Ian, and I suspect we might see a bit of panel rubbing. Well, we will see a lot of panel rubbing because um, the ground is still very wet. Steve Lowry's gone into the front. Well, wow. oh, look at that. I, mean, I spoke too soon. I said Lowry had gone into the front, but then Morris Baines drilled him. We'll have a look at that on the replay, but, well, I'm not too sure if I'm going to lay the blame firmly on Morris Bain. But there it is for yourself from a different angle. It's Lowry in the front, and I don't know if he's come over, Ian, or is Morris just drilled no, He's him? come over under brakes. He's sort of uh, lost his line, and Morris has just uh, drilled him, yeah. Well, really, I guess you'd have to say Morris had nowhere else to go. He was, he was sort of committed to that. So, well, we said we'd see action. Scott Hay getting a fair bit of altitude there as we go back to the real-time racing. Newlands in the front. Barry Free in second place. Both of them in Pajeros. There is Nigel Newlands. And Scott Hay in the 204. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on him. We'll keep an eye on Morris Bain, the Etco car just up ahead of him, the man that uh, he had it coming together with. That is Steve Lowry. New truck for Steve. The new Jeep Cherokee. But Newland's making no race for this at the moment. There is Frank Turvey. Now, Frank's son is in here as well, Glenn. Oh, 204 in the wars there. And that was Scott Hay. That step-up jumps catching the mountain. Yes, it is. It's a, um, it's a bit of a razor back, if you like, or a razor front. It's um, steeper on the front side than it is on the back. Brendan Holland making his way toward the front, but it's two Pajeros out in the lead at the moment. Newlands in front of Barry Free, then it is Holland. Then I think we go back to Scott Hay, we'll keep an eye on that for you. In fourth, track's actually starting to come back to the drivers now, Phil. It's drying out a bit and they're getting quite a bit of drive. Well, there is Holland, there is Free, there is Lowry. But Newlands has run away from them a bit here, Ian. He's got that advantage, he got a great start. He's got a glimpse here of Glenn Turvey in the truck. Frank in the, uh, the Nissan. Still pretty hard under tight cornering for these vehicles. Scott Hay right on the back now of Barry Free. So that's a battle at the moment, I think, for second and third. There is Frank Turvey, number 451. That's a big truck to handle around here. Tight course. Morris Bain putting the heat on Holland. Oh, and did I say putting the heat on? Well, just getting into the side of the little Suzuki. Doesn't deter Holland too much, though. Oh, that doesn't look so good, Ian. No, um, I don't think that's purposeful. I've often thought of um, putting a uh, brake fluid injector into the exhaust system, and that's the type of effect you get. <laughs> good to get rid of the opposition with. Expert comments and opinion coming from Ian Foster, a man that has been there and done that, watching this on the edge of his seat. As we zoom in on number 426, this is Brendan Holland. He's the man that was having all the smoke signals out the back of the truck. This is the man that's leading it, though. 
This is Newlands, Nigel Newlands in the Patero. Looks like Morris Bain comes through for second in the Etco truck, and then it is Holland. Well, as we said, we'll go on into the night here at Huntley, and that will be a new dimension. Well, plenty of oil getting into the combustion process of Brendan Holland. Oh, and real problems here, and that is Scott Hay, and he's tipped it over, and that'll bring out the red flags, I'm sure of it. It's Glenn Turvey gone over to assist, which is uh, great. He's just stopped dead and run to his uh, aid. Well, Hay is OK. Gives the big crowd here the thumbs up. You know, you mentioned that Glenn Turvey ran over. We should probably mention that. I mean, these guys are cutthroat competitors when the green flag drops, but their mate's off the track. Absolutely. They? they say they are, Phil. So the restart for the sport trucks, the four and six cylinders, and also the class twos. There is the man that was leading it. He'd be cursing the fact that the red flag came out because the rest of the field is bunched up behind him now. There's the father and son combination of Glenn and Frank Turvey at the back of the field. I think this is the final lap, is it, Phil? Oh, we got a traffic jam here. That is Holland. We saw him having all sorts of problems with the engine. Meantime, at the front, it is Newlands, and now he's got all he can handle with Morris Bain. Round goes Holland with a little bit of help from the Turvey family, I think. Yeah, that's a Turvey sandwich. So the tactics working for the Turveys and not working for this man. This is Greg Holland. Meantime, the race leader heading down towards the chicken flag. The restart, just the one lap. And this is Nigel Newlands. Morris Bain will go across the line in second place. And I think that'll be Steve Lowry through in third in his new Jeep Cherokee. Well, I said that the atmosphere had changed as the darkness falls here at Huntley, and that's exactly what's happening. This is class three, 1600cc powered machines, lots and lots of modifications, lots of horsepower, and I think we'll see some close racing here, Ian. Yes, you will. This is quite a good field. We're on board here with Lindsay Poynton in the Elf Oil sponsored car. We look for the leader, Malcolm Lamby, trying to make his presence felt. He's in about fourth place at the moment. Lindsay Poynton is in Foston told you, out in the front. It's Roger McKeown, number 338. Lindsay Poynton being chased at the moment by Don Atwood from up in West Auckland. Both these guys, plenty of experience, know exactly what it takes, know how to set up their cars. And, you know, we mentioned before that as the darkness came, the track conditions have changed. So tyre pressures, once again, are going to be critical. Yeah, it is. Um, the conditions are getting drier and drier, which is great. Roger McEwen there, Richard Crabb, Chris White. So things tightening up at the front of the field. Pointing in the lead. Yeah, he's struggling to hold it. Uh, well, not struggling, but Don is making an impression. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting. Edward is a Toyota powered car. Just getting a little bit of a run on point in there as they come into this tight hairpin and down the inside comes Atwood well he can't quite make the pass stick but look to me Ian the point and just drifted a little bit wide he certainly opened the door for him you yeah, feel sometimes you come in so wide that you uh, there's nothing you can do about it people can get under well, it hasn't worked for Poynton because I think he's lost the lead. This is Richard Crabb. He's back in fourth place at the moment. Just up ahead of him, it is Malcolm Langley. But now it is the, uh, well, maybe I spoke too soon. Poynton's still in the front. Well, I don't know how he got that back, but he certainly did. And if anything, it looked to me like Don Edwards just, just lost a little bit of ground there. They're a lot closer in the previous lap. Yeah, Phil, but on a track like this, it's, it is quite easy to catch it again right there he's back with him now oh that's right the inside line working for john atwood the elf car on the front atwood this time changes tack squares off the turn now dive up the inside it's the elf car of pointing out in the front then it's atwood and atwood's got to watch out for malcolm langley because he's right there as well and richard crabb i guess should any of the guys in front of him make a mistake he'll be in the pound seat this is the battle at the front of the field and it's getting a little bit busy looks like a traffic jam on the southern motorway there is the pass for the lead. Now we've seen Don Edward do this many, many times. Have a look at this. It's Atwood on the inside, pointed on the outside. Gets the nose in front in the Toyota-powered buggy, but can he hold it? Yes, I think he can this time. So now it is Pointon challenging.
Richard Crabb on Malcolm Langley, so there's a battle going on for third and fourth as well. As the chicken flag flies wide, it was oh so close, but it was Don Atwood that got the win. Poynton will go through in second place. In the first couple of races, we had front grids and um, sort of pulled away a little bit, but uh, once we were back in the grids, it, it was a case of coming through the field, and it wasn't that simple, but uh, managed to, you know, um, make the most of other people's mistakes and, and come away with wins, so we were... Plenty of action to come before the darkness falls on Huntley, though. Let's go back and watch round three of the Asset Finance Off-Road Championship. Some Class 5 action for you now here at the Placemakers Huntley Speedway. And these cars, all powered by 1,300cc cars. A lot of these, this is the Suzuki class, isn't well, it? Well, a lot of them are Suzukis, and over goes Dean Graham. Oh, well, what a start. What a start. And did he get a hand there? Was Shane Walters involved? Have a look at it on the replay. Second car on the script. Well, I think he did it. Well, he might have tripped over the front wheel of Walters. I'm not sure, but I think he might have done it on his own. Very uncharacteristic for the 2006 National Class 5 champion. I guess the beauty of these things is you just put them back on the wheels again and they, they go. do. They do. Yeah, they're very resilient like that. Here we are with the restart, and I can tell you that Dean Graham is back in the field. Didn't get too much of the first uh, go around sorted. Let's see what we can do this time around. Uh oh. More problems, and it's that man again, number five. Well, tell you what, if his uh, race night was a fish, he'd throw it back because he's had a shocker. And that's Darren Ronson in the uh, camouflage paint job. That's that intrigues me. That paint job, it's just great. Looks as though he's just coming back from the duck shooting expedition, but um, he's winning the race. <laughs> he's doing the job, he's getting away from them, he's hiding from the rest of the field. You could probably say five, three, four. There's Andrew Wilton. Currently running in third place. Got a bit of a battle on his hands too. Pretty nice handling little cars these. Um, they are smaller in stature. Oh, somebody just clipped the wall. Probably to miss uh, Dean Graham's car, but Wilton made the move of the race from fourth to first. There it is on the replay. Just dives up the inside. They left the door well and truly open. And Andrew Wilton goes into the front running. He's got the smoke screen going, Phil. <laughs> is he ever? <laughs> Number 534 on your screen is Andrew Wilton. He is the race leader and, well, it is smoking a little bit, but it's not slowing him down. He's pulling away from the rest of the field. Here's a good battle. Number 1008 is Max Bynes. And that's what you guys call an Odyssey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. these are motorcycle and motor driven, mainly home built. There's not a lot of them around, but um, they still fit in with our sport quite comfortably. Well, he was having a battle there with uh, Darren Ronson, but he's... Uh, lost that battle. Oh, more and more smoke. Why? Wow, how many laps can this guy do? That doesn't look very good at all for Andrew Wilton. 548 in second place is Carl Vinton now. And there is the Odyssey and there's uh, all sorts of problems at the back of that little car by the look of it. And the brake disc glowing bright red. So we're down to the last lap in this heat of Class 5 and out in the front it is Andrew Wilton. Second place is Carl Vinton. And what a performance for the little Odyssey because uh, Max Bynes is going to come across the line in third place. There is the man that's won it though, second place there is Vinton, and look at that, right on the line Ian, it's broken, but I think he's going to get third. First, across the finish line and that was it, bang, it collapsed on me. Well our camera this time on the rear of the Southern Finance PPG Cougar of Tony McCall, as we're set for a start here in the darkness at Huntley. Now I've said it before, these are the Formula One of the off-roading scene and the man to beat is the man with number one on the side of the Cougar and that is Tony McCall. And I think Ian Foster, maybe he'll use his Speedway experience to some good advantage here. Sure Phil, he's a very good exponent at both Speedway and off-roading. However he's chosen off-road racing to further his career and there he's already in the front. Well, he hasn't got it all his own way because Alan Hillman coming right back at him and the big post is uh, Porsche Power Baja Bug and McCall using all the track and a little bit more to get uh, up uh, and back into the front and Hillman stalled the car. Well, it's going to cost him big time because these are like sprint distance races and you just can't afford to make a mistake, especially when you've got the caliber of opposition like the man on your screen. Yeah, Tony's got it pretty well set up here. It's Alan Hillman, sponsored by Big Posters. I think in third place was Colin Meredith. We'll pick up that for you when they come a bit closer, but certainly no doubt about the race leader as they work their way into the hairpin and onto the infield section now. 
the Southern Finance PPG Cougar of Tony McCall. I know he's done a lot of experimentation, a lot of development work with uh, his tyre manufacturer, BF Goodrich, to get just the right compound. Brilliant pictures coming to you from the darkness on Huntley Speedway. It's round two of the Asset Finance New Zealand Off-Road Championships. Tony sort of changed his lines a little bit. He's running the outside of that jump, coming into that big sweeper. So uh, he's refining his line right around the track to just get away even further. And there goes Shane Huxtable. This is Hillman at the moment in second place. And the really and Foster mentioned Shane Huxtable. Well, there he goes and moves into second spot. Number 125, Shane Huxtable. I don't know that he's going to catch Tony McCall, but he's going to try and make second his own. Hillman through in third. Then I think we'd go back to Mike Cox by the look of it. There is Cox. And in behind him it is Colin Meredith in the Signforce Lubricants car. But there is certainly no doubt about the race leader. He is just putting a whole lot of daylight, or it probably should be darkness here at Huntley, between himself and second place. And more problems here for Hillman. Here is Colin Meredith over the main straight jump, or should I say the back straight jump. Of course, we're using the quarter mile oval here at the Placemakers Huntley Speedway and, of course, the infield. Up over the main straight jump, heading toward the checkered flag is Tony McCall. He is a four-time national champion. Well, after a night of frenetic racing in the Asset Finance 2007 New Zealand off-road champs here at Huntley, we can tell you that in Class 1 it was Tony McCall from Shane Huxtable, whilst in Class 2 Morris Bain got up over Nigel Newlands. Class 3 went to Don Atwood from Lindsay Poynton, and in Class 4 it was Frank Turvey over Brendan Holland. Class 5 was a tie between Andrew Wilton and Carl Vinton, and in Class 8, Clive George just nudged Gary Baker. I think the short course format is vital to off-road racing. It gives us a chance to bring the, the sport into towns rather than expecting the public to go and find the off-road racing. The off-road racing, we, I hope, will be in the town that they live in.